Week 17 of the NFL starts tonight. Taking a look at all the games that we have. The Ravens could be the first team in NFL history to lead the NFL in scoring defense, takeaways, and sacks in a season. They just got done thrashing the Niners at their place tonight. Another AFC North team looks to solidify its playoff position. Browns hosting the Jets. And Cleveland can clinch a postseason berth with a win or tie. They've been doing it with Joe Flacco at quarterback currently. Started the season with Deshaun Watson. Also, Amari Cooper had a monster game of questions about his health and availability for this one. What's good, streaming people? Welcome to CBS Sports HQ. This is presented by Geico. Got Haley Sutton, Lige Dusable on set. We also got two-time Super Bowl champ Brian McFadden joining us as well. Great to be with the crew. Let's talk about Cleveland, guys. They're, they're looking good. A winner tie gets them into the postseason. Still an outside shot at the one seed, depending yeah. if the Ravens will falter, which doesn't look like it's likely, <laughs> but you never know. Yeah. Never know, especially this year. You know what stands out to me is that among teams that have at least nine wins in the NFL, they all have one thing that the Browns haven't had. One starting quarterback yeah. all year. Four different quarterbacks for Cleveland. Lige, I'll start with you. What stood out to you about the position Cleveland's in right now? First of all, the coaching job that they've done. You talked about it, Tommy. The injuries at the quarterback position. No other team has had four different quarterbacks and has double-digit wins like the Cleveland Browns. And we know, right, Jim Schwartz on the defensive side, that defense would play a lot better this year because he turns defenses around. He allows his guys to be who they are. They're gritty, right? They play a lot of man coverage. They get in your face, and then he lets the front four get after you. But I think the biggest surprise to me, Tommy, has been the philosophy change since Joe Flacco has come into the fold. If you look at what Kevin Stefanski's known for, he's a run first guy, but with Joe Flacco coming into the fold, it's been a lot different. They've thrown the ball almost 40 times plus a game while they've only run it around 20 something times times a game. So to me, that's been the biggest surprise. The philosophy change from Kevin Stefanski and the, and the coaching job they've done with all the injuries that have occurred on that team. Yeah, Lejay, I agree with you. This might be the best coaching job out of or any team in the National Football League when you talk about teams sustaining injuries to key contributors, especially to the quarterback position, right? And they're on what, their third quarterback and they got Joe Flacco off the street. But one thing a lot of people are forgetting about as well, guys, Bradley Chubb, I mean Nick Chubb, I'm sorry, Nick Chubb. Remember, they lost Nick Chubb in the early parts of the season and they still have been finding ways to be uh, uh, successful on the offensive side, especially running the football. So you talk about losing your star running back, one of the best running backs in the National Football League, and your star quarterback, and you haven't missed the beat. People forget about those guys. That's, that tells you how well of a coaching job that Kevin Stefanski has done. You talk about Jim Swartz and the, uh, the defensive side as well. This is one of the best coaching jobs we've seen in quite some time when you talk about having injuries to big-time players and still finding ways to win ball games. Yeah, and both of you talked about the job that Joe Flacco has done this season. We kind of alluded to it there with that graphic. He's coming off of three straight 300 yard yeah. performances. And I will beat the table about this because this is a man <laughs> who got the call while he'd been watching the NFL season from his yeah. couch. So to get up, get off your couch, be throwing elite numbers. Um, on top of that, he's had the benefit of having a guy like Amari Cooper. Oh, you mentioned it off the top, the massive game that he had last week. Uh, BMAC, Amari, though, questionable with a heel injury, but just the chemistry. Talk about the chemistry that Joe and Amari have had that have put the Browns really in this situation since he stepped in at QB. Yeah, if you didn't know any better, you thought it was uh, the year 2008, Joe Flacco was either throwing at Derek Mason or Anquan Bolden. The way the relationship has uh, surfaced with Amari Cooper since Joe Flacco has become the starting quarterback there for the Cleveland Browns. And Amari Cooper is a go-getter. I always felt like Amari Cooper was one of the best route runners in the National Football League. And Dallas felt like his best years were behind him. They decided to move on. And man, a diamond in the rough was found for the Cleveland Browns since Amari Cooper has become a Brown because he's been a big time playmaker. I understand he's questionable. I expect to see Amari Cooper in the lineup. And when he is in the lineup, I mean, that offense can do numbers, especially in the passing game. And yet, and still, he's a bit older in the tooth, but he's shown the ability to do what? Get behind defenders in the coverage side of things and creating separation. Never been an issue for him. So kudos to Amari Cooper, you know, showing a, a, that he still has a lot left in the tank. And Joe Flacco is a smart quarterback because anytime number two is on the football field, he's trying to get him the football and they've been successful in doing so. 
BMAC, the one thing I can tell you about my draft mate, Joe Flacco, is that he's always been able to throw the leather off the pigskin. And he came right off the streets, like you said, Haley, six weeks ago. He was on the couch. And to have this type of chemistry with Amari Cooper, and we're going to some film and really break it down, some of those big-time throws. It's been a philosophy change, like I talked about. When you talk about Kevin Stefanski, he max protects. And this is a two-man route. This is essentially a double team on Amari Cooper. You see it right here. Steven Nelson and also Jimmy Ward, they essentially have a bracket. But they max protect, leave David Bell in. A nice job by Joe Flacco throwing to the open space for Amari Cooper to go up and get that ball. Heavy play action pass. This is what they like to do. They like to pull guards, run the football. So it buys the linebacker. You see him get downhill. Now you get Amari Cooper to step on that corner's toes, run that post route. Jimmy Ward gets too far inside. Nice throw right there by Joe Flacco. This is what I talk about, the philosophy change, right? They go in heavy personnel. This is 12 personnel, but that's an extra offensive lineman. Again, heavy play action pass. Then you get a bootleg. Now, Amari Cooper, this is cover three. You see a stutter and go. He's one-on-one -on, -one on the outside. Outside. Look at him high point that ball, break the tackle, and get into the end zone. Let me break it down from the end zone view. You see David and Joko in the middle coming on his drag route. See how he buys the safety. This is cover three, deep, three deep. He, he gets downhill, Jalen Petrie. That ensures the one on one on the outside. And again, Mari Cooper, one of the best route running receivers in the league. High points the football, then shows the grit and determination to finish and get into the end zone. We talked about this connection. 265 yards for Amari Cooper last week, two touchdowns. But Joe Flacco, guys, since he started in week 13, is averaging 326 pass yards per game. That is number one in the NFL in that tenure. So Joe Flacco, right, he can always throw the ball down the field. And the one thing about him is, he, is he's very streaky, and he's been a, a grade-A starter for the Cleveland Browns this year. You know, I took some lessons reading lips. I was seeing Amari Cooper with Joe Flacco. Amari was saying, boy, you throw the best deep ball in the NFL. He's all, he always has done that well. I don't know if he actually well. said that or not, but I'm <laughs> saying that. He threw those He's beautiful deep balls. He's always done that well, man. If we talk about Jets and Browns, we're going to get your picks in just a second, BMAC here. But give me one or two X factors for tonight's game. I have an X factor for both sides, starting with the Cleveland Browns. We just highlighted Amari Cooper and Joe Flacco, the relationship. But the X factor for me with Cleveland is actually David Njoku. I mean, David Njoku has really benefited from Joe Flacco becoming the starting quarterback, and the numbers tells, tells us that. In four starts with Joe Flacco as the quarterback, Jay, David Njoku has four touchdowns. He actually leads the team in receiving touchdowns with six. And in those four, four starts, he's averaged around nine targets from Joe Flacco. So Joe Flacco loves trying to get David Njoku the football, especially in the red zone. And when he's getting these targets, he's coming down in the clutch with those said targets. So he is the big time X factor for me because based on the success that Amari Cooper had last week against the Texans, you better believe the Jets, they're going to devote extra attention to Amari Cooper, and that will open up many opportunities for David Njoku. And then as I transition to LeJay's New York Jets. Yes, they're LeJay's Jets. He might not want to claim them right now, but they're his Jets. Give me Brees Hall. Brees Hall is the X factor for the Jets, and he is the star that stirs the drink for the Jets. When you talk about being successful, not just running the football and catching the football, he is that guy. Not to mention having Trevor Simeon going against this outstanding outstanding defensive unit from the Browns. It's imperative to get number 20 going. The Jets, they have six wins in the season. In five of those wins, Brees Hall has scored at least one touchdown. In a few of the ball games, he had multiple touchdowns. So whenever he's getting to the end zone, they're in prime position to win ball games. And that's going to be very, very important. If they look to have any success with Trevor Simeon as they start in quarterback, you have to get number 20 going. He is the X factor for the Jets. BMAC, I like where you're going. And I'm going to switch it up since it's the last Thursday night football of the year. Instead of just giving you X factors, I'm going to give you key matchups as X factors. Brees Hall is one of them, right? You talked about it. When he scores a touchdown for the Jets, they're five and one this year. If you look at what he did last week, 90 yards on the ground, B Mac, but 90 yards receiving as well. And if you look at this Browns defense, when they've struggled this year, it's been teams that have been able to run the ball. Look at the Seattle game. Look at the Rams game. And then they also got their backs involved in the passing game. And then the matchup with them, Jeremiah Owusu Kormore. I mean, this kid can play off-ball linebacker. But B-Mac, he's third in the NFL in tackles for loss. Usually the top five guys are always defensive linemen. That lets you know how fast and reactive he is from the off-ball linebacking position. He's going to be big trying to slow down Brees Hall in the run game, but also in the pass game. And then my other key matchup is Bryce Huff 
The defensive end from the Jets versus James uh, James Hudson, the offensive tackle for the Cleveland Browns. When you look at Huff and what he's done this year, second in the NFL in pressure rate behind only Haley's Michael Parsons, right? <laughs> this guy continues to get pressure off the edge. He's going to be a big factor in trying to get this Jets defense off the field on third down. And if you look at James Hudson, who's come in because they've had injuries on the offensive side, on the offensive tackle position, he has struggled at times with holding penalties, pressures, and giving up sacks. So, Huff versus uh, Hudson will be a big matchup in determining this game today. Yeah, I'm excited to see both of these defenses play because they've been so good. They've been kind of the strong suit for both of these teams, so I'm looking forward to that. Let's get to some picks, gentlemen. The line here, the Jets, the underdog going into this one at plus seven and a half. The point total, 35 and a hook. BMAC, what are you taking in this one? I'm not taking the side Haley, Tommy, Leger. I'm taking the total. I'm getting under the covers. Give me the under, and here's why. <laughs> I mean, the Jets, you see there in your graphic, the NFL, uh, they're worse in, in total offense. Uh, I don't expect to see a drastic change in their efforts tonight. And then also, too, Leger, you know this better than all of us. The Jets, they struggle offensively on the road. Their last four ball games, four road ball games, they've averaged just roughly over seven points. Those defenses that they face in that four game stretch, Miami. Buffalo, the Raiders, and the Giants. You just saw there in your graphic on how well the Cleveland Browns defensively have been, especially at home. So you're playing against a team in the New York Jets. They have struggled to score points on the road against average defensive play. What do you expect to see from them playing against elite-like play coming from the Cleveland Browns? So give me the under when you talk about this to total set at 34 and a hook. I could see Joe Flacco and the Browns scoring around 20 or 23 points, but do I see more than seven coming from the Cleveland uh, from the New York Jets? I don't think so so give me the under I like where you're leaning right there because if you look at Joe Flacco three straight hundred yard passing games well if you look at this Jets defense uh, be back 32 straight games they haven't allowed a 300 yard passers just to put that into perspective we know this is semi revenge Joe Flacco game because he's been with the Jets the last three years but let's not forget Trevor Simeon when he's with the Jets in 2019 he got hurt by Miles Garrett so this is sort of a revenge game for him as well when you look at these two teams I think this will be a gritty defensive matchup but I think special teams will play a factor in this game because Dustin Hopkins like he will be out for the Cleveland Browns. The Jets could be without Greg the Leg Zerline too as well. And the Browns could be out be without their punter. So special teams could be an issue. I do like the underbet, but I think seven and a half is entirely too high for this Jets defense. Give me the Jets to cover the plus seven and a half. All right, Lige rolling with his Jets. Gentlemen, thanks so much. Thursday night football, the last one of the season. We always look forward to chatting with you. A big game of NFL action happening on CBS this weekend. Seven games with playoff contention on the line here. Of course, the big one, including Miami taking on Baltimore, that explosive offense against a dominant defense. Then, of course, you got Cincy at KC, the Chiefs trying to get on track, clinch that AFC West title.